In my talk today, I am um, I, I'm going to, as Brianna said, I'm going to talk about seven things most developers don't know about Windows Azure Block Storage. I'm going to, oh, and then I'm going to dig into one pattern in a little more detail than the others. Um, let's see, here we go. So Brianna already gave you that bit. Pretty much coding out loud finds me to most places on the web. And uh, very briefly, I, I some of this material. There's a whole, uh, there's a chapter, in fact, on the valet key pattern in this uh, in my in this book that I uh, published uh, in the fall of last year, a few months ago. So um, I, as uh, Brianna mentioned, I'm uh, I founded the Boston Azure User Group back in uh, October of 2009. So we've been going for about 40 months. Uh, so if you're ever in the Boston area, come visit us. Microsoft says I'm a Windows Azure MVP. I'm a consultant and it's official I'm a consultant because Staples printed some business cards for me. So enough about me. Uh, so we're going to uh, talk about blob storage. Quick review, I'm assuming that you know something about it. It isn't going to be uh, uh, a conceptual explanation of it so much as some edge areas, thus the, the title of uh, some things that if you know something about blob storage, you may not know these other things. The categories are going to be uh, the different shapes and sizes of blob storage, how uh, HTTP headers uh, still matter with blob storage, talk a little bit about the cost modeling for uh, blob storage and compared to other things, some of the programming considerations, uh, especially some you might not be aware of, uh, the, the global reach and the robustness of blob storage. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a, a clever use of uh, blobs for a uh, use of creation, creating a semaphore to span uh, applications in the cloud. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the uh, capabilities of Azure that you control programmatically and those that are built into the platform uh, for uh, that result in many copies of your data. We'll talk about that across three different dimensions. Uh, very briefly, this shouldn't really be eight, it should be seven and a half or something. Uh, some minor comments about safety and security, and that, that just all those set up. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about is the valley pattern. Now, uh, we have, um, uh, I, I believe, uh, 90 minutes. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh, take questions in flight, so you should uh, feel free to get Brianna's attention, who will, uh, I assume, uh, Trans, translate the question over to uh, to me uh, or whatever, and um, and then I'll also take questions at the end. And this is going to be a uh, uh, we're going to look at some of the sources of the data, we'll look at some code snippets and uh, portal. So we're going to be jumping around a little bit, so this won't be a uh, you know, slideshow. So very very quick review of blob storage. I'm going to start by uh, giving some context of Azure and then put uh, blob storage in the context there. Now, can, can I, uh, Brianna, can you see my entire browser or is it cut off? Okay, good. It was a little ambiguous to me if it was all showing on screen, so thank you. So this is the, uh, if you go to windowsazure.com, and it does this redirect thing here, basically windowsazure.com. And this gives you a nice overview of the platform. So if you click on features of the platform, uh, it has Azure websites. This is hosting for your PHP, ASP.NET, Node, your WordPress, WordPress blog can go there, MySQL lives over there, a bunch of things. Uh, virtual machines, this is uh, this is infrastructure as a service capability, if you're familiar with that buzzword. This is what Amazon Web Services offers, uh, and Azure also offers this. Uh, 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 I'm going to mute it. Um, uh, cloud services, this is the platform as a service model. This is... Uh, this is mostly what the theme of my book was. I'm not here to pimp the book, but uh, but that's building architecting applications in this context. Mobile services, big data, media. 
and and my my point here is uh, the Azure platform is very large, very broad, very deep, and many of these other services that are touted as the highest level you know, capabilities of the platform under the hood are going to be able to take advantage of blob services, of blob storage uh, services, websites, virtual machines. We'll see many of uh, the use cases in here where it comes down to use of blob, blob storage. So it's a pretty fundamental building block for the rest of the Azure platform. Uh, in a nutshell, Blob Storage is a distributed cloud file system. You can put your files there. And you can reach them uh, through uh, internet protocols, through HTTP. And uh, that's pretty much a, a pretty crisp summary of it. Anywhere that you have internet connectivity, you can access a blob, a file, that lives on Azure Blob Storage out in the cloud. Very simple. And some of the vocabulary here, in order to create a uh, or to manage a, 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 blo a, a blob or use blob storage, you first need a an Azure storage account, and then uh, within your Azure storage account, you create what is known as a container. That's like a folder or a, a, a you know place to put files. Um, not strictly speaking, a folder. Uh, in that folder or container holds uh, holds your files, holds your blobs. So just by way of giving full context, we're in, um, this is the Azure portal. So if you have a production or if you have any assets running in the Azure cloud, you're probably familiar with this portal at manage.windowsazure.com. And you log in here with your uh, live ID or now called Microsoft ID credentials to access all of your assets, including blobs, which live in here in the context of uh, other storage accounts. And I happen to have a few storage accounts here, but just for um, for demonstration, you can do create a new thing, data service, service, storage service, quick create. You choose the account, you want to create it as part of, I'm going to say, um, uh, actually, I'm going to choose just a region. We'll say U.S. Uh, East, and we'll put it in this account here, and we give it a URL. It's February 13th, and we'll notice this enable geo replication thing. We'll we'll come back to that, and I'll hit create storage account, and that's that's it. It's created. And now I can proceed to create uh, containers within it and then upload uh, blobs to those uh, containers. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute there as well. So this is just giving you some context of um, use of the portal. So we'll put that aside for the moment. Um, as you, we didn't really talk about it, we're not going to. A, a blob is a one of three uh, capabilities that come with a storage account. Uh, the other two are Azure Tables, which is a semi-structured uh, data, uh, database, a NoSQL database, if you're familiar with that. Um, kind of mentally, you might map it into a, a structure as loose as Excel, where you, have, uh, you don't have a lot of rigor. There's no schema. And that has a lot of interesting capabilities. That lives in the same storage account as Blobs. And there's a queuing facility, too, a reliable queuing service that also lives in the same storage account. We're not going to talk further about tables or queues, but you should know that they live in the same place. I'd also make a comment. Uh, this is an iceberg. And my comment about the iceberg is you should think of many of these cloud services, like the Azure storage services and Blob storage in particular in this uh, talk, as kind of an iceberg, where the iceberg has a small uh, surface uh, exposed above the water, but the bulk of it, the majority of it, is below the water. You don't see it easily from above. And these APIs are that are, are exposed by Azure Storage for, for blobs and other things give you a very simple seeming interface into an incredible amount of robust functionality that you can just kind of take for granted, and hopefully you'll you'll appreciate uh, much of what's uh, uh, available to you through this 
the below the surface part of this iceberg by the end of this talk, uh, perhaps more than you do now. Um, the, according to Wikipedia, one ninth of an iceberg is typically uh, above water. Um, so keep the iceberg metaphor in mind because it's a pretty useful, uh, pretty useful one. Thank <music> you.